Welcome back to Let's Make a Game, a channel about making computer role-playing games using the free program Twine and the Sugarcube format for Twine. In this video, I'm going to continue my series on adapting the board game Source of the Nile. So I've uh, set up an expedition and set off, and we have um, quite a lot that we've already seen. Um, we met a... Uh, group of strangers and they ambushed us and they killed all our guards and we had a journalist and a missionary with us both of them were killed in the battle um, and that's all old uh, old stuff like that's all stuff that we've covered already in previous videos but we have some new stuff um, you'll probably notice on the side here we have a sort of character sheet or a description of the expedition and you might notice that the expedition is much reduced. We have no gifts. We have no. Um, we have no companions. We have no guards. We have no bearers. We have only myself, or the you know the um, the player character, one musket and ten rations. And you also notice probably that we escaped. That the consequences of losing the battle was that we we ran away. And that we continue our um, we continue our turn and go hunting and so on. But today we're going to talk about we're going to very briefly talk about um, putting information in the sidebar. That is something that I've covered a couple of times before, so I won't go into it in too much detail. But also uh, the consequences of defeat and how we coded that. So let's have a look at um, at the code. So I will say, um, in order to test this properly, I sort of cheated. I have a um, I have a little cheat in the bit of the uh, program that deals with whether you meet a um, whether you meet any any locals. Um, the way that that normally works is you roll. Well, it's the equivalent of rolling two six-sided dice. Um, and what I've done is just arbitrarily set it to seven, because if you roll a seven, you meet people if there's a river in the area. So most of the time, and it always starts with a river in the area, unless it's marsh or swamp. So most of the time um, when testing it, you will meet someone. Um, that's the same reason that I've set the size of uh, the enemy groups to 30, even though... Um, that's not justified by the dice that are rolled because again I wanted to test having fighting a large group and if I didn't put that in if I used the probabilities as in the game it would take far too long to get to the specific situation that I want um, so let's start by looking at the the sidebar so there's a special title that you can give to a passage Actually, there's several, but the one we're going to talk about today is Story Caption. And it has to be exactly like this with the capitals and the lowercase and with no space. So capital S, T-O-R-Y, and capital C, A-P-T-I-O-N, with no um, space in between it. And if you set up a passage with that name, uh, it will execute whatever's in that, um, in that page on the sidebar once the main page has executed. So it's quite good, I have found that it's quite good for character sheets um, or for the equivalent in your game, for sort of giving you the overall situation. Um, and I've set uh, what I've, the code, I won't go through the code because it's very straightforward, it's just a table that gives all of the, um, uh, the numbers that you have and also the condition, the physical condition of your, the player character and any specialists that are with you in terms of whether they're sick or well or improving. Um, the only other thing I will say is that it is very important to use variables here that you don't use anywhere else. If you're going to change the value of any variables, those variables have to be specific to story caption. And the reason for that is that um, if you if you don't do that, you can change the values in story caption, but 
you're using the same variables in the main game, and so that might have some effect that you you don't intend it to have. Um, so I always use uh, in this particular case, it's a variable called SB dollars SB, which is basically the same as Z or Y or X. It's a temporary variable just used for loops, but it's it's only used in story caption. It's never used anywhere else. Um, the other thing is the way that I usually set it up, uh, most of the time you'll find that there's a few screens or a couple of screens where you're making your character sheet, or in this case, setting up the expedition. And so you don't, um, you don't want to have the, the, um, the, the expedition dif uh, displayed yet because it, it'll tell you that there's nothing there or sometimes you'll get an error because it's referring to arrays that haven't been filled in yet. So I usually have a variable, um, and in the story caption, the whole thing's wrapped within a if that variable is equal to one, then you then you know display the character sheet. So everything's within an if. In this case, it's dollars de, which stands for display expedition, and I set it up here because this is the point at which you have a finished expedition. So you set de equals one there, and um, Therefore, you won't get you won't get the expedition displayed at the start of the game in the sidebar. It'll only be when it's appropriate. Okay, so let's talk about um, let's talk about escaping or the consequences of defeat. Um, in the original game, there's a uh, a simple die roll. If you roll a one, you're taken prisoner. If you roll a two, you're killed, and that's that's it for that explorer. And if you roll a three to six, you escape, and then the number tells you a different thing. Like three is you escape with nothing, four is you escape with a musket and nine rations, I think, and then five you escape with a musket, nine rations, and one roll on a um, on a table to see if um, what what comes with you, it'll literally either be a bearer or a guard or a scout or a horse or a camel or a canoe. And then um, if a bearer or a mount comes with you, the mount will be carrying something, um, which will be rations or, you know, whatever you've saddled it up with. Um, I've made it slightly more complicated, but I've basically, I've got the same probabilities. Um, and I had to sort of work out how to, how to work it out um, with the fact that you've got multiple specialists. Does that mean multiple roles? Well, sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. I'll show you what, um, I'll show you what that means. So uh, here is after defeat. You will come, you will come here um, once you've decided or once the game has decided what specialists have died um, if you've lost if you've lost. So after victory is a separate uh, procedure, which we haven't coded yet, and we'll probably be getting to quite soon. Um, so if random one to six is equal to one, then you are taken prisoner, and that takes you to the prisoner page, which is uh, a sort of separate little subroutine, um, which I, again, will be coding and talking about soon. But there's one in six chance that you're taken prisoner. Uh, if you're not taken prisoner, there's a one in five chance that you are killed. And you can see that that, apart from anything else, says don't display the, um, that set, it sets DE equal to zero, so that sidebar variable. So it won't display the um, expedition um, because you're killed. You can't see how many bearers are left or anything else. You're, you know, you're not, you're not uh, experiencing anything anymore. Um, when you have an if random one to six equals one, else if random one to five equals one, um, this has a overall one in six chance of happening. So up to here, it's very much the same as the original table. One, you're taken prisoner. Two, you're killed. Um, after that, it gets a bit different. The probabilities are the same, but I've I've handled it in a slightly different way. So most of this page is the else which has a four and six chance of happening. And as you can see, includes quite a lot of, like quite a lot of code. So we have a new 
variable called dollars ES. And dollars ES is an array um, that's similar to dollars EX. Dollars EX is how much of everything you have. So let's get down to that. Um, we have dollars EN, which is the names of the different stats. So how many horses, camels, canoes, scouts, guards, bearers, muskets, gifts, and rations you have. We have dollars EX, which is the stats, and they correspond to EN. So for example, EX4 is set to 1 if you have a scout and 0 if you don't. Or EX1 is how many horses you have, if any. And ES is exactly the same. It's how many horses, ES1 is how many horses you escape with, ES5 is how many guards you escape with, if any, uh, and so on. So what, what we're doing uh, when, we, when we process escaping is we have to work out what's in the ES array, and then when we work out what's in the ES array, at the very end, we will um, transfer that to EX. So whatever you escape with is whatever you have for the future. So let's, let's get to the top. There we go. OK, so you escape. It tells you you escape. We have a for loop that goes from 1 to 9, and it just sets ES 1 to 9 to 0 rather than to be unassigned or it might have uh, numbers in it already from the last, you know, you might have had another battle and escape, but so we need to reset it. Then we set X equal to zero and that is the number of mounts or canoes brought by the expedition and we'll see how that works later. So first of all, we're going to roll for what every specialist and the player character escapes with which goes up to there, and then down here we have a, a role for um, whether any members of the expedition come with you. The way it works in the original game um, is that it's all one role because there are never any specialists, and um, so I had to sort of make a decision about, well, if you have more specialists, does that mean you'll escape with more stuff and more people, or does it mean that you would escape with a set amount? And what I decided was that more specialists would mean that you escaped with more stuff on average, because each specialist would tend to carry stuff, but that it doesn't affect the number of people that escape with you. So if you have four specialists, you'll probably have more muskets and more rations and things with you than you otherwise had, but you won't have any more bearers or guards with you than you than you would otherwise have. Um, so I will say there was a slight mistake that I made in ambush. Um, when the enemy kills a certain number of guards, uh, I said if X, X, the number they've killed, is greater than or equal to EX5, we go to defeat. Well, what I should have done was set EX5 to zero because um, we need to test whether people come with us and guards are a type of people and we don't want guards coming with us if the story has already told us that all the guards have been killed. So EX5 is set to zero if the enemy kills them all, but it's not set to zero if the guards fail their morale roll. If they fail their morale roll, then there's however many guards were alive at that point. Um, and some of them might end up coming with you. Others of them sort of, you know, scatter in a different direction and are never seen again, or they decide they want to go home, they don't want any part of this, whatever. And there's a note there to that to that effect. Don't get, don't, oh, I should have said don't set EX5 there. Don't set EX5 to zero in this case because there's a possibility that some guards escape with you if you do escape. So getting back to the main page we're going to look at and getting back to the main part of... What we look at, we have a for loop, and the for loop goes from zero to c dot length, incrementing by one every time. And if z equals zero, which is the player character, or pz equals one, meaning that a particular specialist is present, then we do all this stuff. We roll, um, we roll to see what the, what if anything they carry, 
with them. And I decided to split the rolls up to make it a bit more random. But again, same probabilities per person. So you have a 75 chance of bringing a musket. So if random one to four is greater than one, then we set ES7 equal to the smaller of ES7 plus one or EX7. So you have a 75% chance of bringing a musket, but of course, if all of the muskets have been accounted for, well, you won't create an extra one as it maxes out at however many you have. Similarly, there's a 75% chance of bringing some rations. In the um, original rules, it's always nine rations because that's how many a person can carry. But I thought, well, yeah, but you can carry more than that in the short term. Nine is how, how many you can carry sort of all day. But you can you could grab more than that if you know you if your adrenaline was up you could grab much more than that in and run in the short term. So you might then find that you have to get rid of some of it because you can't carry it all. But you could certainly bring it all, and of course you could bring less because you know whatever maybe the bag got cut or the or the bag got opened and some of them fell out or something like that. So I decided to slightly randomise it instead of nine. It's uh, two dice plus two, which gives an average of nine. So if random one to four is over one, then we set ES9 equal to math.min, i.e. the smaller of, ES9 plus random one to six plus random one to six plus two, or EX9. So again, you bring, there's a 75% chance that you bring a certain amount of rations, uh, but you can't bring more rations than you have. Then we have a three in eight chance per person of bringing a mount or a canoe. So either you've ridden off on a horse or you, if you're in a, a, um, an expedition that's going on the river, you paddled away in a canoe. Now, I'm pretty sure, I haven't quite done this, this bit of the code yet, but I'm pretty sure that you can't have a land expedition that has canoes. You can't have a land expedition that's carrying canoes. If you can, um, then this code would create the possibility that you could be have a land expedition and a person could escape a lost battle and be carrying a canoe. And that strikes me as very unlikely, if only because it needs more than one person to carry a canoe. These canoes are assumed to be very, very large um, and sort of made of heavier material than, you know, modern ones, which are, you know, a bit more advanced. They've managed to make them strong, strong and light at the same time. Um, whereas these sort of canoes are probably limited to wood and so it's probably a bit heavy, etc. Um, and so it seems a bit ridiculous to have an explorer running away with a canoe uh, under their arm or whatever. So if that is the case that you can have canoes with a land expedition, I'm going to have to go back and change this code because it would lead to a potentially pretty ridiculous circumstance. But at the moment, we're assuming that's not happening. So we have a three and eight chance if random one to eight is less than four that we increment X, and we remember that X is the number of mounts or canoes brought by the expedition. So, and then we, uh, that's just, and then we just close off the ifs and close off the for loop. So having done that, we now have to deal with X, and there's three possibilities. One, if X equals zero, well, that's simple. You didn't escape with any mounts or canoes, so um, no need to do any coding there. Otherwise, if X is greater than or equal to EX1 plus EX2 plus EX3, in other words, the horses, camels, and canoes added together. Well, if you escaped with more than or the same number of mounts or canoes as you have, well, that's quite easy. You escape with all the mounts or canoes that you have. So all we need to do is we set X to be equal to EX1 plus EX2 plus EX3. Now, you might wonder why we're doing that. Aren't we finished with X if, if we're at this point? Well, no, and you'll see why. We set X equal to EX1 plus EX2 plus EX3 in case we've got a number that's higher than the number we have. And then we have a loop that goes from 1 to 3, and it sets ESZ to be equal to EXZ. In other words, we escape with all the horses, all the camels, and all the canoes that we have, which might be zero, um, probably will be zero in at least one case because you're unlikely to have horses and camels and canoes, but um, 
you escape with everything you've got. Otherwise, neither of those things are true. We haven't escaped with everything. We haven't escaped with, with nothing. We escape with some of the mounts or canoes, but not all. And how do we deal with that? Well, we have a loop that goes from one to X. And in each loop, each iteration of the loop, we set Y equal to one to three. And we say, we pick horses or camels or canoes, in other words, and we say, if ESY is less than EXY, in other words, if we have one that we had in the expedition, but we haven't yet put it in the ES array to indicate that we escaped with it, then we do that. We increment ESY. We, we set it to the value of itself plus one. Otherwise, we set Z, we reduce the value of Z by one. And what that does in a for loop, because this is using Z as its loop, setting Z... Uh, to, to one less than its current value, we'll just disregard that role. So let's say Z is two, and let's say we, we get to here, we'll set Z to one, and then at the end of the for loop, it'll increase it to two, because we Z++ in the, in the description of the for loop. So all it does is effectively says, well, we don't have any, we don't have any spare camels. You've chosen camels, and we don't have any spare camels, so just ignore that and randomize again. Um, this is probably only useful if you have both horses and camels. Like most of the time, you probably have just one of these. So this is sort of a bit overly elaborate, unless you have more than one type of uh, mount or canoe at, at, at one time. But you know, it has to be done because you might have you might have horses and camels. Anyway, and that is uh, that is how we deal with that is how we deal with X once we've decided how many mounts or canoes we escape with. Now we say there's a one in four chance that one or two non-specialists escape. And what I mean by non-specialist is guards, bearers, and um, guards, bearers, and the scout, if the scout is present. And I've just got a note to myself not to use X in this, uh, in this part of the code because X is the number of mounts and or canoes and we still need that X. That's why we set X equal to that value up here. We, we actually are going to use x still, and we'll see that in a second. But if random 1 to 4 equals 1, then we execute all the code down to here. So we set z equal to a random number 1 or 2, which is how many escape. And then we have this all... Um, well, we have similar to all, some, or none, except that the, the thing that we did with the with the mounts and the and the canoes, except that it can't be none because Z is always either one or two. So if Z is over or equal to ex4 plus ex5 plus ex6, then obviously we're in a pretty bad way if that's true because it means we have a, at most two of these. But anyway, all non-specialists escape, and so we just have a loop that goes from four to six, which sets esy to exy. In other words, everyone that we've got escapes. Otherwise, some of them escape. And again, this is very similar. Um, we have a loop that goes from one to Z, so it'll either go from one to one or from one to two. And we set W equals four to six. If that particular slot has uh, its ES, that slot of ES is less than that slot of EX, we increment the, the ES. Otherwise, we set y to be um, one less than it was, which has the effect of sort of disregarding that run through the for loop essentially, because it'll go down by one, then it'll go up by one at the end. All right, now this is where we deal with, this is where we deal with x. So we set x equal to x plus es6. Now, what is es6? Es6 is the number of bearers who have escaped. Notice that it's ES, not EX. So this is the number of mounts, or this is the number of horses, camels, canoes, and bearers in total. Why would we want that particular total? Well, because they all carry stuff. If we escape with a horse, it has some stuff in it, or on its, you know, in its saddlebags. Same with a camel. If we escape in a canoe, we're assumed to be paddling away, and there's some stuff in the canoe with us. Um, Then, 
And in fact, specifically, each of these is assumed to have 10 things in it. And uh, 10 things meaning rations, uh, muskets, and gifts. So we look at ES7, that's the number of, I think that's muskets that we've already said we've escaped. Like, this is the number of ES7 will currently be the number of muskets that have been carried by either the player character or the specialist in, a, in their escape. ES9 is the same but for rations. And then X times 10, because we're going to add X times 10 gifts or whatever to, to this uh, load that we escape with. If that is greater than or equal to EX7 plus EX8 plus EX9, then that means that we escaped with all the muskets, gifts, and rations that we had, um, which probably means we didn't have that many. Um, but anyway, um, that's, the, that's the number. Um, you'll notice that that 10 is less than... Um, a, like it's less than a horse can carry, but I guess the assumption is that if you escape with a horse, you're riding the horse, and that's how you escaped. But anyway, Expedition escapes with all the muskets, gifts, and rations they had, and we can see very similar code to what we've had before. We have a loop that goes from 7 to 9, and we set ESZ equal to EXZ. Otherwise, if X is over 0, then we set X equal to X times 10, because for each one of these, we're going to escape with 10 goods, and we include cargo. And I'll get to cargo once I finish this page, which, we're nearly, which, we've, which we've nearly done. Um, so this is a simple, uh, a simple case where we escape with everything we have out of that, that category, slots 7 to 9. And this is a more complicated case where we don't escape with everything and we have to sort of work out which we escaped with. Once we've done that, um, then the expedition's resources are reduced to whatever they escaped with, as the note says. So we have a loop that goes from 1 to 9, and EXZ is set to ESZ. Then we have to classify the expedition, and then we have to check MP. So classify expedition, why? Because that decides whether we are moving um, on foot or on a canoe, and if it's on a canoe, do we have a speed penalty? And, you know, um, if we're on foot, or, or if we were mounted, well, we might not have mounts anymore. We might have to change to a foot expedition, and that means that we're going to go more slowly, and and we might have um, escaped on a canoe, but we might not have escaped with any canoes, and in which case, well, now we're a foot expedition. So presumably, in that in that fictional case, presumably they sort of ambushed us on the river, and a couple of us managed to swim to shore and get you know escape into the forest or something. Um, and so we may have to change. Currently, classify expedition is blank, so um, that's not going to do anything. And then having done that, we go to check MP. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to work out. I might, once I code this, it might be that I get rid of this line because it might be that classify expedition goes straight to check MP. But for now, that's my that that's that's how I've set it up. Um, And we shall see. We shall see if it works. Ah, so let's have a look at cargo. That's the only thing I haven't um, told you about. So it says here X is the remaining resources to specify. Um, the way it works on the table is that you roll, um, and it's got. It's, I've reproduced it here. You roll a die, and if it's one to three, it's ten rations, and if it's four to five, it's ten gifts, and if it's six, it's ten muskets. Um, that's why we're dealing with units of 10. I wanted to keep that, that element. But um, we'll, we'll see this as we go. So we set y is equal to random 7 to 9. But if y is equal to 7 and random 1 to 2 is equal to 1, then we set y equal to 9. And that gives the same probability as this. Um, because if we imagine 6, imagine doing that 6 times, we would expect to start by getting 2 rations, 2 gifts, and two muskets, but because of this, 50% of the muskets will turn into rations instead. Rations are slot nine, and muskets are slot seven, and gifts are slot eight. So two rations, two gifts, and two muskets would turn into three rations, two gifts, and one musket, and that is the that is the um, the probability there. So it looks like um, they think that you're more likely to escape 
with a big bag of rations, and then the next likely thing is you'll escape with a big bag of gifts, and then the next likely thing is you'll escape with a big bag of muskets. I guess a big bag of muskets is the least useful. Um, in the original role, if you're rolling on this table, you've already got your own musket, so that's sort of slightly less true. But, you know, honestly, I think you could justify any anything. I mean, it's a panic. Your guards have all been killed. You know, you're not... You just grab what you can and run, you know what I mean? And it's not necessarily going to be particularly sensible or, or particularly what you want. So that seems fine to me. Um, so we decide this using these probabilities. We set W equal to the smaller of, that's what math.min means. And this time we have three. Math.min, you can have as many as you want. Usually we've been doing two. So we've had math.min, uh, you know, Z or one, something like that. But you can actually have... You can have as many as you like. Um, in this case, we've got three. So W is set to the smaller of the following. 10 or X, i.e. the number of resources we've got left. So if we've only got seven left, we'll, we'll reduce it to seven rather than 10. And then EXY minus ESY. So what I mean by that is, let's say EXY is 20 and ESY is 15. Well, that means you've already determined that you're going to escape with 15 of those things, and there's only five left that you can possibly escape with. So you would reduce it to the, the number that are left over and not yet accounted for. So you find the smaller of 10, the number of resources left to specify, and the number of sort of unassigned resources. And that might be zero, um, because you might have chosen a slot where you have actually escaped with everything that you've got there, or EXY might be zero, in which case that's going to be true immediately. But So it might be a number up to 10, or it might be zero. Then we set ESY equals ESY plus W, so we, um, we have determined that we have escaped with that many more of whatever that thing is and then we reduce X by that same amount. We have that many resources less to specify. And then if X is greater than zero, well, that means we've still got more stuff to deal with, and so we include cargo, i.e. we effectively go up to the top of the page and, and go again until we run out, of, um, run out of X, basically run X down to zero. So that is defeat. Usually you escape, four times out of six you escape, one time out of six you're just killed, straight away and the game is over and one time out of six you become a prisoner which I will uh, deal with in a future video. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do next. I might do what happens after victory, so the equivalent of the equivalent of this. Um, after victory you can gain resources and you can also gain points, victory points, which we haven't yet dealt with but which are actually a very important part of the game. Um, so I might do that or I might deal with um, I might deal with becoming a prisoner, or I might deal with something else, probably one of those two though. 